Hey, hello, hi, it's MF Finish UK, back at your service, and I'm here today because we are all under quarantine. There have been, I mean, obviously, global, worldwide pandemic, which is affecting the way we go about our daily routines. So I thought I could put something together for you guys in terms of a routine that is best equipped to help you keep yourself in shape while you're indoors. So the structure of this routine is gonna formulate in a specific type of way, similar to what I do at home. So it's structured by a five step routine, which you repeat three times. And there's a trick within this routine, which makes it unique and adaptable to any given individual, because you can in fact do this across any degree of difficulty. So it works with a strategy of training called every minute on the minute training, where you manipulate a minute and understand how much effort you want to apply in terms of time to a given activity. So you can work with splits. So say you want to do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, or you want to do 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or 50 seconds on, 10 seconds off. It's basically number bonds within 60 seconds. And I will be running through five activities today. And then with those five, you will do those three times. And that's a 15 minute circuit you'll do. That's how I exercise normally, regardless of pandemic or no pandemic. And I'm gonna just introduce that to you. Okay, we're starting with the burpee, the age old favorite of indoor workouts or non-equipment workouts. I know a lot of people are familiar with this exercise, but if you're not, you see some visuals hopefully floating around the screen. And yeah, it just combines upper and lower body. It's quite a nice exercise in terms of combining those two elements. Not a lot of activity does this. So obviously we have the jump, which does well in working your glutes, as well as also major muscles in your quadriceps. So rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. So it's quite nice in terms of see legs being targeted and also subtle deltoid action in terms of your shoulders with regards to stability when you're doing the jump before you do the jump up. So in terms of benefits of the activity, there's some research in the Burpee Enigma Literature Review out of the Australian Institute of Sport, which highlights the benefits regarding to, or leading towards the partaking of burpees. It can be stated that the traditional or the modern burpee places large metabolic and neuromuscular demands due to the compound nature of the individual movements and utilizing both upper body and lower body in unison adds to the complexity. Exercises that require greater complexity and are less familiar to the participant create more central and peripheral fatigue. That in turn affects the rate of recovery. Again, you can see from the research that it's highlighted that there's a lot of energy being used in this exercise, which highlights the benefits of the movement. So in terms of people who do and don't feel comfortable with the movement or exercise in general, I have some progression that you wanna add if you feel comfortable in terms of adding a press up before you then do the jump. <laughs> I feel like this will obviously increase muscle recruitment within your body. See, adding a press up is quite intense, <laughs> adding to a very explosive routine regardless. But if you feel less comfortable, less confident with the routine, I'd suggest slowing the pace of the routine down to again, reduce the amount of raw burpees you're doing within the given time frame you set yourself to allow yourself to ease into the routine to make sure you feel comfortable with it. Okay, next up we have the push up. Again, it's an exercise known to many. I don't know in terms of difficulty, but I know a lot of people have varying degrees of difficulty with regards to this activity, because again, upper body conditioning is different from person to person and varies from person, and that's fair enough. Again, you're working um, your arms and your chest, as well as also your core, which a lot of people do understate because the press up motion does mimic the motion of a plank. But if we're looking at it in terms of specifics, we have the pectoralis major, the anterior deltoid, as well as also triceps brachii, which are being worked. I'll include a visual to highlight the specific areas. But an article from the journal Strength and Conditioning delves deeper into the muscle activation of the regions I did in fact mention. Article does indeed go on to highlight that the pectoralis major experiences 61% muscle activation the triceps brachii experiences 66% muscle activation and the anterior deltoid experiences 42% muscle activation. Now, the surprising element, which I did mention previously in terms of the core, highlights that the external obliques 
have a surprising 29% muscle activation and the rectus abdominis has also a 29% muscle activation rate which highlights the benefits in terms of your core from a push-up which a lot of people assume to just be purely a upper body activity. There are however progressions and regressions again I just want to make sure the routine is as comfortable as I can make it for anyone who's taking part in this to make sure that you feel included. So I'm gonna start the progressions. There are plyo push-ups which you can do. I think all these are quite challenging. Even doing them myself, elevating yourself up is very, very difficult. And again, this helps with muscle recruitment. There's a lot of more, there's a higher degree of muscle fiber activation, which again, leads to greater muscle development when you do such activity. And then we also have weighted press ups, which means any, I mean, in my scenario, I have weights at home, so I was able to use weights, but anything you can place on your back that balances really is good enough. And just put that on your back or attach it to yourself, maybe a bag or something with a heavy load. And then just continue doing the press ups just to again, increase muscle fiber activation and make the activity more challenging, harder for yourself to be able to gain greater rewards. Now we have, my favorite regression of this activity would lie in the shape of the knee press up which means that you're taking majority of the core and stability element out of it by doing press ups purely from your knees to make sure you just master the upper body element of the activity now this is an easier variation and i hope people do use this and don't obviously do not feel bad about doing this because i know a lot of people feel like if you can't do it the, the real thing, I can't do it at all. Not at all. There's obviously steps and things in place to be able to progress along the various steps. But it should be stated that the knee push up shortens the lever, which reduces body weight loading to 54% in the top position and 62% in the bottom position, and substantially reduces prime mover and core musculature requirements. Next up, we have the body weight squats. Again, very popular routine. Well, again, I hope the theme is being caught along. With as the exercises go through where I'm trying to make sure that your whole body is being incorporated through the whole routine but body weight squats again very popular um, similar muscles work to the earlier routine in the burpee where we have the vastus again medialis lateralis in the quadriceps and your gluteus maximus which is your bum all being worked in concession all, all together really to make sure you perform this activity Again, keyly, we have a paper regarding this exercise, but this one is more in light of form correction because I feel like a lot of people partake in this exercise, but they don't do it correctly in terms of aligning your body and making sure your movements are right to make sure you get the most out of the activity. There are ways to perfect your form and there's an article in this journal of strength and conditioning which highlights how you can perfectly do this. As seen within table one, the summative data highlights the best form to take on with this exercise, where your head is in a neutral position, your thoracic spine is slightly extended, lumbar spine is neutral, hip joints are flexed and aligned, knees are aligned with feet, feet and ankles flat, not rolling in or lifting up. And the position can be seen in figure one in picture D, which is almost the perfect position to be in whilst partaking a bodyweight squat. Okay, obviously I don't know if everyone's aware of their thoracic spine and their lumbar spine, but these are just the mid and lower sections of your spine. I've got a visual to highlight what elements I was talking about. But yeah, again, progressions, regressions, make sure everyone's comfortable with the activity. So for progressions, the first thing I would recommend is adding squat jumps or bodyweight squat jumps. And making sure again, anything that's plyometric, which is a sudden burst movement, requires greater muscle activation because more muscle fibers are being recruited. This happens with this jump. Do that, more muscles are being worked, more gains are being taken or gained. And also you can squat to lower depths, which again challenges and works your muscles harder. Now, if you are looking for a regression within the activity, then I'd say squatting to lower depths is also quite key as well as also moving your legs further apart to gain a great degree of balance to make sure the exercise feels easier on your body. Next up, we have the tricep dips. I'm very, I'm going with very popular routines, but popular is good sometimes. 
So tricep dips, if we're looking at muscle recruitment or what muscles we're working, we are again working the triceps brachii and the pectoralis major. So it's your chest muscle and your triceps. So visual, <laughs> go up now. Um, this is an activity I enjoy personally and can be conducted with anything you are able to rest your hands on really and perform that kind of 90 degree down movement. Um, as an issue subtly with performing it at home as opposed to with a dip machine, I mean a dip bar in a gym where the muscle recruitment is lower as seen in figure one in this the journal of physical educational research where it highlights that the back dips has the lowest degree of EMG activation which highlights the degree to which your muscles are being used for both the triceps brachii and the pectoralis major. This across activities which work both of these regions the most. So the wider grip vertical dips, which would be conducted at a gym, most likely, probably or not, have the highest degree of muscle activation if you look at them in tandem. And back dips don't do too well. This is the reason that I suggest that if you are doing the dips to try and make it harder on yourself by making sure your elbows aren't flared out and making sure you're coming down with a rest or set kind of motion whereby you don't make the movement too fast and try and get the most out of the activity. Those are progressions in itself, but if you are trying to maximize the benefits from this activity, I'd recommend doing that in a normal set. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with the routine, then I'd suggest flaring your elbows out. It incorporates a great degree of other muscles, so your traps, and allows you to spread out the movement and not feel it so intensely as well as also going faster so just again get through it get used to it and make sure that you feel comfortable with it lastly we have the back extension which again works the back this is a region we have neglected today but all important to make sure that we get a total body gain in terms of exercising our whole body <laughs> so i'm not going to lie to you this was the hardest routine i had to go through today because of the energy sapping nature of it and maybe the lack of movement I've experienced within the region but the re the movement really isolates your back and makes sure any other movement is stopped within your body and it moves to target muscles that are finely coating your spine as well as your gluteal muscles so we have the longissimus and the spinalis which are being worked in this activity so I don't know in terms of progression regressions for this it's going to be tough because the movement is quite restricted as it stands but getting your back up further or making sure you don't get it up too much are the only real progression regressions i can think of with regards to this activity there is there are a lot of benefits attributed to this routine as shown in the biology of sport where it states that after the training program, the exercise group had a 20% increase in back muscle strength and there was a significant difference between pre and post training groups in terms of strength parameter. Comparisons between the exercise and control groups meet of mean changes in pre and post training values for spinal range of motion measurements are presented in Table 3. There were no differences between the groups for spinal range of motion values before training, but after training, the, the exercise group had showed a significant improvement in extension range of motion of the spine. This just moves to highlight that although grueling, the exercise is worthwhile. And with that, we tie together all the activities which comprise the circuit, which we'll be able to do. So if we start from top, we have again, the burpee, we have the push up, we have the body weight squat, we have the tricep dips, and last but not least, we have the back extension. Now, again, perform these exercises in your own splits, however you feel comfortable. Bear in mind the progressions and regressions I have stated, which can now help or make the exercise a bit more challenging for you. And do that and see how you get on. And keep yourself safe in this kind of climate while exercising and boosting your immune system. So to tie this together, I do hope you've enjoyed the content and enjoyed or find this routine useful in any kind of surrounding. Um, do like, share, subscribe the content. Um, feedback is also great. I just want to continue improving the content. And do message or um, write below <laughs> of anything you'd like to see in the future. I'm always open to researching things that you guys are interested in. So, yeah, I'll catch you next week.